So we are thrilled to have Dr. Carly Blau, therapist and founder of Boutique Psychotherapy, joining us today, and her presentation is going to be on surviving and thriving. Dr. Blau will be discussing um, thriving and surviving through cancer. With over 1.9 million new diagnoses of cancer on a yearly basis, this talk will focus on the importance of supporting more than our bodies through medical treatment, but also our emotions, hearts, and minds. Cancer affects all individuals differently, and Dr. Blau will be speaking about how we can all remain empowered and maintain intimacy through our darkest days. After all, she says, it's in our darkest days that we find glimmers of light. Dr. Blau, thank you so much for joining us once again. We are thrilled to have you today. Thank you so much, Jillian, and thank you all for taking the time out of your busy days to be here. I am honored and really grateful to be here. Um, and some of the people that you'll see on this call, I'm not sure if you're all familiar with one another, but there are some incredible therapists that are part of my practice that are here as well. Um, and I thought it'd be nice for you all to see our faces um, and know who we are. I am going to see if I can share my screen with you because I developed a little presentation, if that's okay with everybody, just to kind of guide us. You know, Jillian, just to introduce who I am, I'm Dr. Carly Blau. I am a licensed clinical social worker. I have a PhD in human sexuality. I focus on clinical sex therapy. Um, think Dr. Ruth. Um, <laughs> and she really inspired me. And <clears throat> I learned to study the intersection between medical world and mental health world. I became fascinated by that whole piece and how doctors treat so much of us, including myself, on all the things that we go through medically, but they're not really trained on how to be there for us emotionally. So I became that doctor, that doctor who knows how to be there for you all emotionally around the things that you deal with clinically and medically. And then I developed boutique psychotherapy therapy, which is our practice, um, in which all the clinicians in the practice are well-versed and capable of providing therapy around medicine and medical chronic health issues and cancer. Um, <clears throat> and I've also been published in, I did the first research study to confirm that there is a relationship between infertility related sexual stress and sexual esteem in women who go through infertility treatment. So that's a sidebar, but <clears throat> so I'm a published author, which is cool. Um, okay. And then I told you about the practice and the practice we treat individual and couples. And then I want to get into, and we're proud partners of the Mount Sinai, um, women to woman program in which we as clinicians work with individuals from the program to do eight weeks of therapy with one of the clinicians who have been trained by me to provide empowering therapy to get you through wherever you are in your experience. Really um, strong. If everyone can just ensure that they mute themselves, please. Thank you. Um, and so as Jillian mentioned earlier, with over 1.9 million new diagnoses of cancer on a yearly basis, today we're gonna talk about the importance of supporting your mind and body and your emotion and your heart through your medical treatment and your experience, how to remain intimate when sex is off the table, and how sex therapy can empower people through their experience with cancer. I don't know if this resonates with anybody on this call, but I've worked with a lot of individuals who have been impacted by cancer in some capacity, and I recently lectured for over 200 women with the Breasties organization. And so many individuals who are been affected or impacted by cancer are often really overwhelmed and exhausted by the constant appointments needed to manage their diagnosis and treatment. If anybody here feels like that applies, raise your hand if you feel comfortable. If not, just know that I see you. It is exhausting. It's exhausting. Um, and oftentimes patients are asked how they feel, right? You get to the doctor's appointment, they say to you, perhaps, how do you feel today? Or how are you doing? And you talk to them about what you're going through, but I'm a therapist. I know better than anybody that emotional feelings go much longer and take a lot more time to talk about than just your average 20 minute doctor's appointment that you get as a check-in. And so medical doctors, as incredible as they are, they are not trained to help patients cope with the feelings that come up with all the things you have to go through. And they also don't have the bandwidth to do so, right? Doctors have to see so many people and also are working through really tough things too. And us clinicians are trained how to do so. And then psychotherapy, 
right, is a part of how you can support more than just your physical body, but your heart and your soul and your mind, right? A lot of people think, oh, therapy, it's so daunting or it's dark. And I don't want to talk about the sad things in my life. I don't want to talk about my struggles all the time. But at Boutique Psychotherapy, it's an uplifting space. The thing that I hire people to do is we ensure that you come in with your darkness and we find, like I told Jillian, those glimmers of light, right? Like no one deserves to be sitting in that space. And we really work on trying to find that. So I think that's one of the biggest parts of supporting more than just your physical body is making sure you have a safe space emotionally to talk about what's going on, not just in a dark way, but in a way that feels brighter and lighter in your world. Okay, so now here's the fun part. Now I have to talk about sex. I like to think about intimacy. And when I say intimacy, does anyone feel comfortable? I'm gonna bring it back to us being able to see everyone. Does anyone feel comfortable jumping in and thinking about or speaking up to how do you define intimacy? What does intimacy mean to you? Okay, I will Can answer. I say, oh. oh, go ahead. I was just going to say being in, entwined with your, you know, with your partner, having them and you together mm -hmm. and having something come out of it. I mean, that's how I look at it. To see. I love that. Thank you for participating. I really appreciate that. That's I, I was I was going to say um, a closeness, a, um, a physical and or emotional closeness. Mm hmm. Beautiful. And so we're going to go on that. OK. And how do you remain intimate when sex is when we talk about cancer, we talk away about the way that it affects all of us so differently. Every person who experiences it, as well as chronic illness, it impacts every person differently. And patients often ask me, how do I remain intimate when sex is uncomfortable? It's unwanted, it's undesired, it's unfamiliar at this point in my life. It's painful. It's not the same as it once was because I feel sick. I feel different physically. I feel different emotionally, right? How do I remain intimate? Intimate does not always have to do with sex, which some of you brilliantly brought up. I did my own homework for our presentation today. And I came up with four definitions I want to share with you. I think there are, this is, there are known four different definitions of, infer, of um, intimacy, <clears throat> but then I went and made my own versions of them for you. I think that there is emotional intimacy, physical intimacy, spiritual intimacy, and sexual intimacy. Emotional is the state of feeling closeness and connection in an interpersonal relationship that's marked by a consensual sharing of deep personal information. So clients might say that they have an emotional, intimate relationship with me as their clinician because they talk to me about really personal information and they feel really safe doing so. Physical intimacy is the state of having close consensual physical connection that's body to body. You can also have that physical intimacy with yourself through masturbation and self-love, and also getting to know your body parts as you're growing, changing, and your body is going through things. Um, you know, the physical checks that we have to do with our bodies as we're going through physical change, and as a woman is going through an experience with cancer, might also be quite intimate in the way we have to learn to look at our bodies and explore them and be one with them. Spiritual intimacy is another piece in which you can have a close emotional spiritual connection. I like to think of it, some people look at religion, some people think of spiritual, some people just think of energy. Um, and it's in which a person feels an energetic connection to another energy in the world. People tend to say that, you know, they might feel like we have an energetic bond between one another because it's just a vibe we're on. Um, and I love that. I think that that can be really healing for people to feel like you're with like-minded individuals that get you. I'm sure everyone here has had that experience where you meet someone and you're like, wow, we vibe. And then there's sexual intimacy. And that's the state of consensual physical closeness that is meant to result in a pleasurable experience 
for any one person or people involved, and it can include intercourse, but it doesn't have to rely on penetrative intercourse for the connection to occur. Now, I wanted to come up with a couple of things to offer you and then open the floor for questions. And so what I wanted to offer was five intimate things that you can do alone. I lecture often and I speak with individuals often who have been impacted by cancer. And not everyone has a partner to support them through it. And not everyone has a partner that they wanna be intimate with. Sometimes things change, relationships change. Sometimes relationships go through struggles. And sometimes we just let intimacy fall by the wayside as a result of being in a long-term relationship. And it's just not as pertinent as it once was. So there are five things you can do alone. One is journaling. Get a beautiful journal. Treat yourself to something that you love. Um, and keep your thoughts and feelings down. When you get out of an appointment, when you get out of a part in your life, when you get off the phone with somebody that brought you joy, write it down. I always say, if I could show you my desk right now, anybody who knows me, I write everything down. Why? Because there's a commitment to what you are physically writing. When you type it on a phone or you type it on a computer, you type it and you delete it. You forget where you put it. It's in some folder on a computer and you never see it again and it's gone. When you write it down and it's in front of you, there's a commitment to it. And your feelings are worth being committed to. Your feelings are worth being committed to. And so I want you to think about that, that your doctor or whomever you're seeing might not have the time to talk to you about all of your feelings, but those feelings are really valid. And I don't want you to ever go a moment of your life thinking that that's not true. So I want you to write it down. Two, who in here likes to dance? I am a dancing queen. If I could have been a dancer for the rest of my life and had a living day based on dancing, I would dance every day for the rest of my life. And if you don't like dancing, then I want to meet with you one-to-one -one and not even for a session, but I just want to like feel the music with you. And dancing allows energy to be released from your soul. I sound a little kooky when I say it, but it happens. And if any of you have ever been on a dance floor, and maybe one day we'll all dance together someplace in a dream of mine. But when you move, energy releases from you and comes out. And so if you're folding laundry, if you're pooping, if you're writing emails, if you're sitting around the house with nothing to do, put on a, a song that reminds you of a beautiful time in your life, of a time in which you felt utterly empowered, so gorgeous, so strong, and listen to the song and think about what it brings up for you in your mind. The mind is the most powerful, understudied organ in our body, your brain. And it has the ability to recognize things and to bring back emotion. Listen to a song that made you feel empowered or made you feel sexy and close to someone and feel what that brings up for you and how you recall it. Read, keep informed, stay informed about things you're passionate about, learn, look at things that you're craving to learn more about and let it take you where you wanna go. I also think that reading can be a really great way to escape your reality. Some people who are having a difficult time love reporting that they can read erotica or reading um, like a sexy book, um, Oh, there was one recently, like Between Us or something like that. I'll get you the name of it. Um, if anyone knows it, shout it out. But there was a great book recently. Oh, It's Between Us by Colleen Hoover. And people were loving this book that it like took them to an alternative universe and a different time in their life. And it just made them feel so, you know, enhanced. I haven't read it yet, but people really liked it. Um, or engaging and pampering. When was the last time you can say, that you pampered yourself to the umph degree. Like you gave yourself a massage when you put lotion on out of the shower, or perhaps you took a bath, or you went someplace and you engaged in a pedicure or a manicure or a little 10 minute massage, or you just did something at home to make yourself feel pampered and taken care of. We forget in our busy lives the impact that that little effort can make in our world. And it does make us feel better. 
And masturbation can be done alone. There is an amazing resource called omgyes.com, and it teaches women how to masturbate. And there are instructional videos because what do we know? Boys are taught how to do everything and girls, we all have to learn through me. I'm kidding. But we, we learn how to masturbate through, you know, trial and error, or oftentimes women will come to therapy and say that they did it when they were a child, they would rub on their hand or on a doll or on the clicker, but they didn't know what they were doing or why it felt good or in the bathtub. And there was a lot of shame around it, but you're entitled to feel pleasure. And that might be strange, but it is something you're able to have. And that might be something that as your body changes and as you change, that may look very different, but that is something that you can explore as a person in the world. How does your body change? What does your body need to feel pleasured and intimate? And how can you do that? And then five intimate things you can do with a partner. But these I came up with. And I'm kind of excited about them. So I'm going to share them. And then we'll get to questions. One, I call it naked geography. You're getting all my sex therapy tips, but just us. So there's naked geography. I'm sorry for keep messing with the thing. Lay in, your part, lay in bed with a partner with underwear on. You take sex off the table. No penetration can occur. No oral sex can be expected. This is just an activity that's called naked geography. And you lay in bed with a partner with underwear on, and with the help of a candlelight and some intimate music, you touch each other's bodies and faces to re-familiarize yourself with one another, using words to express your likes and dislikes about how you'd like to be touched, and showing your partner with their with your hand, taking their hand, what kind of touch you would like to experience. Most women who have gone through, I, I work with a lot of um, cancer patients as well as pelvic floor dysfunction, and a lot of women often say that what shuts them down completely is the expectation that being touched and feeling good is supposed to result in intercourse or an expectation of putting out. And that expectation shuts us down before we can even open up. And so that's why I make the rule of naked geography, but that's off the table. You're in this just for familiarizing and feeling close to one another. And you'd be surprised what that brings. Two. Making out. Do you know that 38% of couples over the age of 50 do not kiss passionately at all anymore? Our tongues and our mouth and our lips are what we use to communicate the most vulnerable feelings in our body. And when we don't use that to connect to a person that we are trying to share those feelings with, it's like we're not using a part of us that could be used to share how you feel. Like I'm sure everybody on this call could potentially remember a time in which you had a hot, steamy makeout session, right? It makes you feel connected to someone. And that's, that's what it's meant to do. So make out, give massages, no sex on the table again, no intimacy like that, but grab a great oil and engage in a mutual massage that can turn into massaging one another and just feeling connected. You can also do things like talk about all the ways in which you used to pleasure each other and what you used to like about it and how that used to make you feel and what you would like to do differently now, now that your body's perhaps changed or you're feeling things differently. Um, and the other thing is ask your partner to slow dance. It's a rule in my house. If you're asked to dance, you can't say no. It's a rule in my house. And I want to bring that rule to your house. If you have a partner or if you're single and you have a family member with whom you have love, love for. And the next time they're over, you ask them to just dance. Might they think you're crazy? We're all a little crazy. But that feeling you get from dancing with somebody is so heart to heartfelt. And it's an intimacy that we forget we, we can just experience without any kind of sexual pleasure, but it just brings us close. And then when you be, when you rebuild your intimacy out of the bedroom, you'll find that it starts to show up again in it. And I say that that starts within the way that we are intimate with ourselves. How are we kind to ourselves and nice to ourselves and feel beautiful within ourselves? And I know sometimes that the way that cancer can impact our bodies and impact individuals' bodies, that it's sometimes difficult to identify as being intimate or sexy or feeling that way when that once came with something that perhaps has changed in the here and now. 
And that's what sex therapy can do is help you rebuild that so that you can keep feeling that feeling that you once felt because you deserve to feel that. And then of course there's sex therapy. And I just wanted to give you a clue in to what that is, which is it's a type of talk therapy that's provided by a licensed professional who's trained to help people with mental or emotional aspects of sex related issues. Every clinician in my practice is supervised by me and therefore being trained by me to learn everything that they need to know about how to deal with sex therapy. Um, and individuals affected by cancer can benefit from sex therapy because it gives a safe space to process and reprocess the changes that happen in regard to your sexual functioning and sexual feeling that has been impacted by your experience with cancer. And then with boutique psychotherapy, we also developed a sexual empowerment protocol, which is an eight week protocol that we've developed that has certain prompts for every single week meant to enhance your sexual empowerment and to make you feel empowered within yourself. And now I want to open the floor to questions and I'm going to make this really big so I can see each of your beautiful faces. Thank you so much for your time and for being here. And I hope you took something from today and I'm looking forward to our conversation. Thank you so much. Questions for Carly? Or comments? Did anyone feel like anything resonated? Did anyone, and if you want to turn off your camera or if you have any anything to say at all, I want to just be there. I have to say, I love the dancing part. I do that a lot on Saturday mornings when I'm getting myself ready. And, um, you know, I live alone. So I, um, when I'm ironing and I'm getting my things to go and stuff like that, I'm there with the music on and I'm dancing and it does feel great to let, just let go and not worry about anything and just feel yourself dance on the floor at that moment. Mm -hmm. I love that. Do you feel like when you're doing it, it's like nothing matters. Like it, the things that matter in the moment of your movement kind of just dissipate for just that three minutes of the song. Oh yeah. I'm like, I'm, I put myself in a dance floor and I'm, I'm feel like people are watching me dance. <laughs> That's yes, how I are. feel. <laughs> I love that. It's great. <laughs> and I think it's so important to remain, you know, that, that movement, like the fluidity, it's one of the things as a sex therapist, people always ask me like, how do I get more intimate? And it's in the way your body moves, right? Like when you have music on and you're dancing and the way your body moves, that in itself is intimate. It's a fluidity. And that allows you to be really one with the way that you feel. And I think we underestimate the tools we, we come with. It's so interesting. The block happens, our brains block things out out of fear. Our brain blocks things out because of fear. Hildred, what are we afraid of? And I'm not asking you to divulge that here on this call in such a vulnerable space, but in the space of, you know, therapy with the women, to women program, that might be something with a therapist that you can explore of where did you shut down? Why did you shut down? How did you shut down? What were the things before you shut down that gave you pleasure? And why did they shut down? And how can we redefine them? How can we create ways that don't impact your body in a way that causes pain and discomfort, but that activate your body in the ways in which it is so strong and so capable of pleasure. Now I hear you that it's shut down. Do you feel like it's shut down emotionally? Like it's something that you don't want at all? Yes. And that is such a common feeling and such a common experience. It's a trauma response to all of you, what you've gone through and the way in which you work through it is by processing it and talking through what it is that you're craving to get back. Perhaps maybe we talk about, is there a part of intimacy that you miss or what did you once enjoy? And what was that like for you? And the thing I said earlier about the brain being the most miraculous organ in your body what I find that it's my ninth year in private practice, and it's my third year doing this work particularly. And what I find is that when we rejog the brain of what pleasure it used to have, 
and where the pleasure used to be. And we rewrite the story. We slowly get glimmers of pleasure back. It's a slow ramp up, but the slower you go, the more it comes. There is discomfort in sex often. All the clinicians that are on this call know, and when I do my trainings, I teach people all the time. There are a lot of medical physicians that are telling women, if sex hurts you, something is wrong. If sex hurts you, something is very wrong. And it worries us, right? Like if our vagina or our breasts or our, you know, organs, our stomach hurt us after having sex, the brain shuts down. It's like something bad just happened to me. I don't want that to happen again. You shouldn't want that said behavior, which is exactly Hildred, if I'm understanding correctly, what's going on for you. You had a lot of discomfort as a result of having intimacy or closeness. And then afterwards, there's like a feeling, I don't want to feel that again. And so I'm not going to allow myself to engage in that because what if it brings me that same pain and discomfort once again? And that is something that could happen. But there are a lot of things that you can work through with a therapist and a lot of different tools and techniques, like certain lubrications are really good. But each of these things are really personalized depending on your body, your experience with cancer, and also how it's impacted your body individually. So I would be remiss to give um, suggestions without knowing an entire situation. I'm really careful about that, but I do think that this would be a perfect situation for, um, you know, a therapeutic intervention to kind of talk about what are some of the things that could help you lessen the fear and increase the closeness that would help you open your heart and mind to potentially being willing to be brave enough to try to be close again, because you are so fearful and you have the right to feel that way. I, you know, when I spoke, I'll say this, when I spoke for the breasties organization, one of the number one questions that I was most fearful is I have not myself been impacted by cancer. I have endometriosis stage four, and I've had uh, two laparoscopic removals of endometriosis. And I'm pretty debilitated by that and pelvic congestion syndrome and PCOS and pelvic floor dysfunction. And so I myself have gone through a year and a half of my life in which I could not have pain uh, intercourse at all with my partner because of how painful that was for me. And when I'm in an environment like I am today, Hildred, I want to let you know that I went through a time in my life where I was so petrified of even receiving a massage because I was petrified that if I were to enjoy sex for one minute of time, at some point upon penetration, it would be incredibly painful. And with that, I would shut down and my marriage would just get even more destroyed than it was at the time. Mm -hmm. I see you. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I figured out all the tips and tools and tricks and lubes and vibrators and toys and books to stimulate my brain as a woman on this call, not just Dr. Blau, but as a woman to make me feel like I wasn't going to be in pain. Like I had trust, I had tried enough myself and I I did the tips and tricks that I teach all the women that come to my office. And slowly but surely I gained confidence, not in my partner, Hildred, but in myself, that I could do it. And that if it hurt a little bit sometimes, didn't mean it was gonna make me feel the pain that it once felt sometimes. So it's a slow and steady race with a lot of intervention that helps rebuild your confidence. And I'm so sorry that you had to go through that pain and discomfort. And I um, appreciate your vulnerability in this call and the way that it might be um, identifiable and helpful for somebody else here as well. And It's interesting to me, these dilators, um, not to be tangential, but the pain they cause is profound. And a lot of patients report feeling disheartened when they're given the dilators because they're so unsexual and they're so unpleasurable. And I teach about it quite often. I'm actually um, in line to teach a course at the program where I graduated from as an elective around pelvic floor dysfunction, how to teach therapists. 
because <clears throat> I don't have it here. I have it over there. I don't teach penetration Hildred with dilators. I teach it with a vibrating device. I know why? Because if any one of us right now were to get off this call and awkwardly try to insert a dilator, even without having a history of radiation, okay, it would be uncomfortable. And then you add in vaginal atrophy, changes in lubrication and changes in your vaginal biology. And of course, I'm sure it is incredibly uncomfortable. And that's the thing, that's the disconnect between medicine and sex and medicine and mental health is that doctors aren't taught about how to get you through feeling pleasure. They're like, oh, here's a dilator. If you insert this, then it should prepare you for penetration. All it does is make you scared because the dilator hurts. It's uncomfortable, especially when paired with an internal radiation experience. And so there are other things like I would suggest perhaps Hildred finding a small internal vibrator and starting with the clitoris first and allowing your body just to feel pleasure being touched without any kind of penetration, zero penetration, just touching, even if it means putting on a little bit of lubrication and touching your vulva, not even your clitoris, but just your vulva and getting reacquainted, reacquainting yourself so that every time it's touched, it doesn't hurt. Q-U-I-M, Q-U-I-M, and it's Quim. I think the I'll get you the website. The website is Quim. Sir. Yep. So if you look at it's quim.com, I'm going to share it here. They have a CBD lubricant and they have a vaginal daily oil. They call it happy clam, which I think is very funny, but they call My it happy clam is, oil. My last name is and they, um, it's a CBD oil and it's, I just put it in the chat for everyone. It's a CBD oil. Um, and they have an intimacy oil and a happy clam oil, which are also really wonderful for just maintaining um, when there's a lack of lubrication or there's, um, vaginal dryness on a daily basis, or just the discomfort of your vulva and your vaginal lips against each other sometimes, or against underwear it can cause a lot of sensitivity. And so the happy clam oil is wonderful for that. Um, I also find that their intimacy oil for when using a vibrator or a partner, it's condom safe as well. And it's wonderful for reducing pain and inflammation. So when there's vaginal discomfort, the Insquim Intimacy Oil, I use it personally. And it's the one thing that has always reduced discomfort and also like the stinging afterwards that sometimes happens from penetration, either from a toy or from intercourse. The Insquim um, Intimacy Oil is a wonderful intervention as well.